Good afternoon. This is Andrew Sheets with the Third Heaven Traveler. The Third Heaven Traveler blog is a blog that is about this, our spiritual life in Jesus Christ and about him in us, those of us who believe on him and how we apply this existence to our physical world. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, King James Bible. The title of this study is Run Away from Jewish Fables. That includes their calendars, their high watch holy days, their feast days, and getting caught up with this as being prophetic events as showing us the rapture. Instead, Saint, we should focus on what Daniel said and what Jesus said. And this includes the Daniel gap that we are in right now. Now, this is embarrassing because I opened this study with an actual picture, a photograph of my King James study Bible that I've had for over 12 years. And you'll see, this is embarrassing, you'll see I have a lot of notes here, the 1948 to 2018, 2019. I was caught up in these multitude of these YouTube videos, uh, and, and they know who they are. They're used calendars, man. And in love, I call out like Ty Green. He gets caught up into the Jewish calendar thing, uh, that Generation 2434 guy. And even Brother Paul there, I love his work, but still he really ties in hold, and holds on hard to Jewish calendars. And there's many, many, many others out there. When this all really exploded with me personally was there was this gentleman from Canada who was a self-educated, self-styled, if you will, Bible scholar, but his specialty was in Hebrew calendars and the Sabbath and when the real Sabbath starts and ends. It was some interesting studies he sent me, but when he insisted that I was uh, very ignorant because I we had to understand that to really know God's word, we had to understand God's timetable and calendars. And that's when I called him out. I said, liar, liar, pants on fire. We are in the age of the Gentiles, people. This is also the time of the Gentiles. Now, the age of the Gentiles, this is what's spoken of by Daniel and Daniel 9, right? And that age will not end until the second coming of Jesus Christ. The time of the Gentiles, which we are in also right now, will not end until I believe that when the church is raptured and then uh, God once again deals directly with Israel. That's why it's called the time of Jacob. Think of Jacob's trouble during the tribulation. But we are not under the law, and we're in the dispensation of grace, the mystery given to Paul when the Gentiles are brought in. If you want to study Jewish history and calendars and timekeeping and the lunar days and lunar months, the lunar calendar, great. That's wonderful. But to do it as a an insisting that we have to understand that, to know God's timelines, you are a fool and you are ignorant and you're stumbling around blind. How simple can I make this? Now, what really inspired this current study is Tom Horns out talking about this great hidden mystery of this Essenes calendar using the solar calendar. And, and, and let's talk about calendars, solar versus the lunar. All the ancient cultures, and I lived in Asia for years, trust me, they all use lunar calendars. The ancient cultures use lunar calendars. And the is ancient Israel used solar uh, correction lunar calendars, but they also incorporated solar calendars because what they're the way that they become under trodden under the foot of the gentiles they adopted a lot of their timekeeping with the solar calendar 
Now, this Tom Horn, and I'm going to go into this later, he is a brilliant fool. He's so smart, he's stupid, and he's a charlatan. He's always trying to get money, and he's always trying to find these hidden secret mysteries. He wants to find secret stuff to share. He has the insight and really what's happening with time, and he's a fool. Please don't spend your money on his garbage. So anyway, let's be honest about the solar calendar, the lunar calendar, people. We, in the age of the Gentiles, the time of the Gentiles, use the solar calendar. Oh, but you say it's pagan. Okay. So now Tom Horn will tell you that the Essenes, the secret sect of the Hebrew, some cult, really found the true calendar because it was solar and the pagans used the lunar calendar. It's a big, Satan laughs. It's a big mix-up. Stay away from these fables. You've got a good calendar on your wall based on a solar 365 days a year with a leap year every two-year calendar. That's fine. It doesn't really matter anyway, as you'll follow me here. Stay with the prophetic gap that we are, we are in right now. First of all, study to show yourself the proofs. Know what we're talking about here in Daniel. And Jesus even reiterated what Daniel said in verse in chapter 9. So let's proceed here. Open your Bibles, please, <clears throat> to Daniel chapter 9. I want to focus on verses 24 through 27. I'm going to break these down for you later, but let's just read for now. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Right here we see clearly that the absolute finished timeline of prophecy has been sealed up. And this is when the most holy Jesus Christ establishes his millennial kingdom, people. Now, this 70 weeks is 70 weeks of years, and I'm going to describe it. This is the prophetic countdown or the time clock that the angel Gabriel has given to Daniel. And Jesus Christ gave this to, uh, through Gabriel telling Daniel, write these things down. And verse 25, yeah, and I want to insert this again. People, do not be deceived by false YouTube teachers and apostate pastors and Jewish fables and calendars. That includes this Tom Horn and these others. We are in an undisclosed gap of time until the beginning of, of the final seven years known as the tribulation, also known as the time of Jacob's trouble, which is Daniel's 70th week. Let's continue. Now, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Okay, and I'll explain this. And then verse 26, it reads, And after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, and but not for himself, and for the people of the prince that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end, therefore, shall be with a flood. And then to the end of the war, desolations are determined. Okay. And verse 27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Amen. Notice, and I will break down Daniel 9, 24 through 27 for you. Now notice that it is written in Amos 5, 21, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell your solemn assemblies. 
Isaiah 1, 11 reads, And to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of the rams and the fat of fat beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. In verse 13, bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. And then in Isaiah 1.14, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. If this doesn't wake you, Sabbath keeping, new moon, Sabbath, Jewish high days, feast days, calendar, Jewish fable, calendar keeping on the calendar, Jewish time clock. If this doesn't wake you up, go back to sleep. But for those who are not caught up into this, but are thinking, is there something to this? This is who I'm really addressing. Stay away from these people. Just call them out. Take this study I've done and just give them the scripture and say, tell them to get lost. Just say, move along. Now, if you think that Isaiah and Amos were only talking about the first temple period, yes, they were. But we must connect the dots. And the key is Daniel chapter 9, 24 through 27 as our capstone. And Jesus Christ, what Jesus Christ says in Matthew chapters 24 and in Luke 21. So let's break down Daniel 9, 24 through 27. In the first and 24, what Jesus is talking about here. Let, let me just real quick, let me break down Matthew 24, 15. Jesus said, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. So see, Jesus is focusing, Matthew 24 is all about getting the telling the Jewish remnant what's going to happen in the tribulation. No, these are not rapture verses, people. Then he's quoting, of course, Daniel, which brings my focus really hard into Daniel. Now, Daniel has such incredible accuracy that historians often, many think that Daniel could not have possibly written his scriptures hundreds of years. I think it was uh, several hundred years before these events started was when the, I, I'm talking as they, as they continue on, way before they happen is how incredibly accurate Daniel's prophecies are. Now, Daniel 70th week, let's talk about it. To understand Daniel 9.24, let's first understand that we must know what weeks of years is. One week is days in years. I'll repeat, one week is days in years. So one week is seven years. So if we take Daniel 70 weeks, we take 70 times 7, that gives us 490 years. Now, this 490 years is a prophetic countdown clock. It begins after Israel completed their 70 years of punishment, and that's what uh, Daniel's talking about in, in verse 24. See, Israel, remember, they were taken in captivity by Babylon. Now, for 70 years, they were in captivity, and then they were given after Persia defeats uh, Babylon, the Babylonian Empire, the uh, King Cyrus, he decrees that. And uh, King, I, I'm sorry, King Artaxerxes of Persia decrees the decree, and they say it's your 444 4, 4 BC for them to go rebuild. That prophetic 490 prophecy is what this, this Daniel's talking about. Now, this is broken down, the 490 is broken down into three periods. The first one is seven weeks, is seven times seven, that's 49 years. Then 62 weeks, 
And w the way I get 62 weeks is we learned that one score is 20 years. Three times 20 is 60 plus two. And then we multiply that by seven, we get 432 years. Now, when we add these time periods up, we take 432 years. When we add that to 49 years, which is the first seven weeks that's spoken of in verse 25, let's go back up to 25 here. Uh, going forth the command, restore and rebuild the Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks. That's the 49 years. And three score and two weeks is the 432 years. Correction, 434 years. When you add these up, you come up with a total of 483 years. So... If you take 483, there still remains seven years to complete the 490 years. That remaining seven years, that is the seven-year tribulation, people. That's what, Paul's that's what Daniel's talking about. So right now, we are in this undisclosed gap of time. We're in a gap of time, people. Until the beginning of the final year count, the final year is known as the tribulation or time of Jacob's trouble, which is Daniel's 70th week. We don't have any idea of any calendars. There's no calendars are useless. That's another thing that makes me laugh. If you go on a hundred different websites from Chabad to the to Israel today, go on any rabbi, they've got their, the rabbis can't, they're not in agreement. The total Hebrew calendar is a joke. If someone tells me they have a good, accurate Hebrew calendar, they're a liar. They're, well, they're very, they're a liar and they're very, very, very misled and deceived. God doesn't care about their timekeeping. God could not couldn't care less about their new moons. You read it for yourself. Let's go back and look at this again. What? How simple is this? I despise your feast days. He's saying that. And then it, he's full of their burnt offerings. And then watch their incense, their new moons and Sabbaths, the calling as symbols. He's calling them an iniquity and it's an abomination. And he says right here that new moons and appointed feasts my soul hateth. Are you, are you listening to me? New moons and appointed feasts my soul hateth? They are troubling to me? Oh, you say, oh, no, Isaiah was only talking about the destruction of the first temple, okay? Really? Then you're missing the point. This is prophetic. It carries two and through the first temple destruction, the second temple destruction, and a forecast, prophetic forecast, of when the third temple will be destroyed. What do you mean there, Andrew? What do you mean the third temple will be destroyed? Jesus says it. Let's look at Matthew again. Matthew 24 and 15. When you see, therefore... The abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. What does Jesus say in verse 16? Let's go down to verse 16. He says, run. Let's read it. Run. Let then, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. People, this is literal, literally what will be happening in the tribulation at the midpoint. You see, Israel is going to get duped into thinking they have a false covenant. They sign a covenant with death with the Antichrist during the tribulation. Jesus is talking about Daniel here. So let's go back to Daniel. So go back to 
Daniel with me. Let's go verse by verse. So we read, we got 24. So see, verse 24 is setting up the prophetic 70 weeks, the 490-year timeline. Verse 25, he's adding the second two parts, which is the 49 years and the 432 years. So when the temple was reestablished and Jerusalem was rebuilt, there's another, there was another 480 three years before, uh, let's see, yeah, another 483 years to when Jesus Christ was crucified. That was, was what it means, Messiah will be cut off, and the destruction of the, se seven, the second temple, which is 70 AD. Now, right after the second temple was destroyed, which was a mere, a very, very short it was only uh, 40 some years after Jesus Christ was crucified. That 483 years, everything stopped. The prophetic clock basically went into pause or hold, if you will. Again, we are in that gap of the 483 years to when the 490 is complete, and that 490 will be complete at the end of the seven-year tribulation. We see the signs to the beginning. Yes, you say, yeah, but brother, we see these signs. Yes, we see the signs of the beginning of the tribulation. See, Jesus spoke. You, let's read it. He spoke of wars and rumors of wars. We're seeing it. Earthquakes increasing. We see it lawlessness and lewd sinful behavior as in the days of Noah and Lot. We're seeing it. We see the sign of the fig tree. We know that summer is near. We see the signs, people. We know that we're in this final age in this generation. Nevertheless, stay away from these Jewish fables and calendars. We are in a gap of undisclosed time, and it's sealed. The rapture does not need any prophetic sign. All prophetic signs point to the time of Jacob's trouble. Since the rapture will happen soon, right before the tribulation begins, I believe, we know we are very, very close. Amen, Maranatha. Now, if you want, I urge you to take the blog in the description box and you can break it down for yourself. This is the description of Daniel's 70th week. I have it all here. Sometimes it's hard to listen to, but take your notes and go through step by step how I did the math and how I broke it down. And the, uh, the second part, which be, can be confusing, these time markers, <clears throat> was when the Messiah is cut off. That literally means the crucifixion of Jesus. Now, in Daniel 9, I just want to say this real fast. In Daniel 9, uh, 25, 26, after three score and two weeks, the Messiah shall be cut off. And I told you that's the 62 weeks, which times seven, right? 432. Uh, but watch this. It says, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary in the end, therefore, shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. This is literally what Daniel was speaking of, is after Jesus Christ was crucified. The actual time stamp is given to later, which was 40 years later when, the, when Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. I mean, they did not leave. They did not leave one block on top of another. That was the utter, complete destruction Daniel's talking about in 27. Now, on Daniel 9, 27, uh, I'm going to put in the link right below. There are some very confused, very deranged so-called Christians out there that believe that the he in Daniel 9, 27 is Jesus Christ and not the Antichrist. So I... Uh, I want to make sure you understand. If you hear anyone tell you that Daniel 9.27, that this pronoun he is referring to, the antecedent pronoun is Jesus Christ, 
tell them to get lost. No, this is the Antichrist. This is when Daniel and Jesus Christ confirms it, is confirming that the covenant with many shall be for one week. That's seven years. That's when the Antichrist sets up right after the first seal is open. That's when the Antichrist is revealed. After the rapture, Israel will fall into this false peace covenant. Now, in the midst of the week, one week is seven years, so three and a half years into this, into the tribulation, the Antichrist, just as Antiochus Epiphanes, the Greek emperor, desolated the temple, the Antichrist will do something in the third temple. And many think he'll bring in like a pig and sacrifice a pig in there, but he will definitely make an abomination in the temple and he'll make it desolate. And when this happens, Jesus is telling the Jewish remnant, when you see this man do these acts, run for your life because this is the mid trip. If you have any, like I said, if you still don't understand how Daniel breaks the time down, just take the time, <clears throat> do the math, and walk through my notes in here. I'm going to move on here. Understand the prophetic end time timeline, people. I have the link in here. How we will, we're looking for the rapture any day now, any minute, any minute, imminent. Then the tribulation will come. And uh, let me just open this link up here for you. And then the tribulation will be seven years. There'll be seven seal judgments, seven trumpet judgments, and seven vow judgments. Then the Jewish remnant, the tribulation saints, will all join the church that has been raptured, the bride of Christ, will join in with the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then the second advent. Now, I think the second advent, which is Jesus Christ coming again, I think that will happen then the marriage supper of the Lamb when the uh, the literal, literal fulfillment of the marriage supper of the Lamb with the bride. Read my study about the church, the bride, Israel, one in God, then the battle of Armageddon. Then there will be the sheep goat judgment. Then the world, we will go into the millennial kingdom for a thousand years. Then there will be the great white throne judgment. And then the eternal state with the new heaven and the new earth. Now, all of the, this is in the blog. Uh, and also know why King James only understand the church of philadelphia people the church and the links are in here there are the evil workers of the laodicean church who tried to tell you that the church is not does not have anything to do with prophecy or the book of revelation that is a lie from hell the rapture will trigger the final motion for the final age this will be the trigger to set all these things in motion here As I move on, I want to talk about Matthew 24 and Luke 21. These are prophetic events describing the second temple destruction, the tribulation, including the fulfillment of Daniel's 70th week, which will include the third temple and how that's going to all play in. These scriptures, people, are not rapture scriptures. Paul was not given the mystery of the gospel of grace and the rapture at this point. Jesus was telling them about the end of the kingdom gospel and know that the gospel of the kingdom is a dispensation that was removed and replaced, what? After Jesus' resurrection by the gospel of grace. Understand the kingdom parables of Matthew 13. I have the link here. You see, everything changed. You no longer had Jesus preaching the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. It all stopped after he was rejected after Matthew chapter 13. 
Know this, that modern Israel is the husbandman of Matthew 21, 33 through 40. I urge you to read that. National Israel, as we see it now, these are not God's people. Yes, God's using Israel because what? He used the evil Rothschilds to bring Israel back as a nation. Why? To bring him into Jacob's trouble. Don't pray that Israel, uh, that uh, for the peace of Jerusalem people. Why? That is a Davidic covenant that will happen during the millennium. You need to pray that Israel be saved, just like Paul prayed. Read your Bible in Romans chapter 10. You see, the modern Zionist dominion evangelicals like this Mike Evans and these Joel Rosenbergs and them, they have no idea what they're doing, people. They're leading sheep astray. Read and study my study on this. We are to pray that Israel be saved because all of Israel is not Israel. There's only a remnant. Only a third are going to come out of this people. Read that in Romans 9, 25 through 27. And Hosea 1, <clears throat> 10, 11. Read my studies on that. No dispensations. Understand that. And see why I don't pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm talking in this current dispensation now. Uh, look at the study I did on Generation 2434. He, I double, he doubled down. I tried to show him this, and he got nasty, just ran away. But he's bad news, people. He literally is trying to tell people that the eagles gathering, that's the rapture. No, it's not. Read the study. That is the tribulation when the fowls of the earth literally descend on the piles and mountains of dead bodies, which is in Revelation 13. I show him that, uh, a correction, Revelation 16, where I have it all in the study. Uh, read my studies on the Jewish mystics and the confused Messianic Jews, how confused they are. They have a major identification problem, identity problem, people. And uh, here's Matthew 24. I want, I was going to go through scripture by scripture, but I just want to focus on, first of all, when Jesus is talking about this, yeah, here's what I have this in here. You see, the disciples went and met with Jesus privately, and they said, what are all these, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> the disciples were like, what are you talking about all these terrible things? About, you know, the, these things are going to be happening to the temple. And Jesus looked at the temple. They were outside, probably staring right there at the temple. And Jesus said, you see this? There won't even be one stone left upon another. And then they left, went out separate from the people. And then privately they said, what can you please tell us what these end time things will be? What will be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? And Jesus said, hey, first of all, the end times you're going to see many false Christs. You're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. But don't be troubled. The end's not here yet. And because nation will rise against nation. We're seeing that. Kingdom against kingdom. Famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. We're seeing it. Now, these are the beginning. Now, when the, now watch this. When the tribulation starts, their people, the Jews will be killed and hated, as Jesus is talking about. And then right up into, okay, right up into the end, the love of many will grow cold. And he, and he says, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And the gospel of kingdom. Now, verse 14, Jesus is now talking about the in the actual tribulation, the suffering that's going to happen. There have been so many false teachers like that. J.D. Farag, he someone got him smartened up, but one of the many mistakes he's made in his perverted Bible translations, he actually had his little his church, the Calvary Chapel, and, and look at the Calvary Chapel mess people. He actually bought into this thing, you bought, bought into this program where we're going to make sure that the gospel of the kingdom 
is preached into all the world, and then Jesus can come back, the rapture can happen. He really believed that. And they sucked up thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars from stupid Christians. I tried to tell them, when the gospel is preached into the whole world, this is what's going to happen. The greatest evan, uh, evangelism, and you talking about revival, is going to happen in the first part of the tribulation, people. You're going to have the angel across the sky. You're going to have the 144,000 Jewish uh, the, the Jewish male virgins. You're going to have the two witnesses, which will be uh, Moses, without a doubt, the law, and Elijah, the prophets. Both of them were raptured, taken away, and their bodies were never buried in the ground. Now, then Jesus says, but then all these things are going to happen. Now Jesus is talking about the mid-trib, the middle of the tribulation. And Jesus says, but then when you see the Antichrist desolate and cause an abomination. Uh, he's going to do something horrible in the temple. This is what the abomination is. And the desolate means people are going to completely say it's, we can't go in there anymore. That Daniel was talking about in Daniel 9, 27, Jesus says, run. I already went over that. Um, therefore, told you, behold, do not get desert now. This is Jesus. Now, this remnant, and I think it will be King David that leads them. I have it in my study there. That will literally, they'll go to that rock, that mountain that they're being called to. And that is Petra. And they'll stay there to the end. And uh, let me just say this. Um, the Oh, yeah. Another people think that Matthew 24 is rapture. They say there's there, there'll be two. It says here, there'll be two in the field. One will be taken, the other left. This is a sign. This is certainly a sign with the rapture, kind of giving us a, a foreshadow, if you will, what the rapture will be like. But again, this is all talking about those, the Jews, that will be in the time of Jacob's trouble. They're going to be thinking everything's fine. They're, they're going to be thinking things are great. They've got a peace covenant sign. But even though they see destruction going on, they're still thinking, hey, we're going to get through this. But guess what? When the actual time comes, and Jesus is talking about the second advent, his second return, not the rapture here. Now, others, Bible scholars have said, no, this has got to be talking about the rapture. Because it says, therefore, be ready for such an hour you think not the Son of Man come. In Matthew 24, 43, Jesus says, but know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Now, some have misinterpreted this to mean, hey, this can't be the tribulation because when they're in the tribulation, they know the time frame and they know what the time stamp is in the prophetic time clock. But notice, Jesus is not talking about the ones who are who's watching. He's talking about what? The ones who aren't watching. Uh, furthermore, it says, The Lord of the servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he's not aware of. So Jesus is addressing, uh, addressing the ones who are asleep. Now, in Luke chapter 21, I want to just say this. Some people have confused Luke 21 with the tribulation in its entirety, but Jesus is also referring in the first part to what, 70 AD. Now watch here in verse, uh, yeah, look at verse 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Now, Jesus is referring to 70 AD, and this will be the perfect type and shadow which will happen when? When the Antichrist 
causes the abomination of desolation in the temple. When the Antichrist desecrates the third temple and decrees free hunting, open hunting season on the Jews, this will be the same thing. And this is what, again, referring back to Matthew 24, here in Luke 21, 21, Jesus says, and let them which, ye, which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let them not that are in the countries enter there too. Uh, and yeah, let me talk here again, those that insist on using Jewish fables and Jewish calendars. In, in verse 24 of Luke 21, Jesus says, Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Again, this is not going to happen until the first part, the rapture of the church, and then the age of the Gentiles will finish after, at the end of the tribulation, at the second advent when Jesus returns. When Jesus returns to earth and establishes the millennial kingdom, make sure you understand the time of the Gentiles, age of the Gentiles is over. The world, the earth will be on a completely absolute different program. It will be a theocracy established by Jesus Christ as the King of kings and Lord of lords. There will be no more man's government. There will be no more man's calendars. We will then go back to observing the feast days. It's uh, very clear in Zechariah. It's very clear in Revelation. It's also written in Hosea and Micah. Uh, we, the, the body of Christ, the remnant, in the tribulation saints, we will all come in together in union during the millennial reign and rule with Christ with what? A theocracy, a rod of iron. Now, to close this up here, uh, I've got some links here about should Gentiles keep feasts feast of Israel? Of course, the Zionists will tell you, sure, they'll say, Christian Zionists, well, oh, yeah, you should keep these high holy days. Of course, the Judaizers will say yes. But the Gentiles do not need to keep Feast of Israel. Again, I say need to as doctrine as to follow God's word. No. The Eastern mysticists, Jewish mysticists and Kabbalists, they're all caught up into this calendar, soul, uh, sun, lunar, Sabbath-keeping business. Now, this Tom Horn, he's what really prompted this study, but I had to give you all this background. In this Essenes prophecies, this hidden Essenes prophecies, Jesus' imminent return, I urge you, I'm not going to take the time to do it, but see my notes on exposing Tom Horn and exposing the Essenes that he says were friends of the church. Yeah, read this. I'm not kidding you. Read this. He says right here, Tom Horn says, Christians today uh, are misunderstood, and it's unfortunate because of the amazing kinship that Christians had with the Essenes. That's a lie from hell. This is what a perverted misguided charlatan that Tom Horn is. And he says that Pharisees were using corrupt pagan lunar calendar. The lunar calendar was not pagan. God used a lunar calendar. They were set up for time observing the months as the moon, the cycle of the moon. Now the solar calendar was later brought in, but he says that God gave the solar calendar to Adam. And what, what Tom Horn uses, he always uses well, if, if he'll, he'll cherry pick scripture, any translation, if it suits his purpose. But then he uses Dead Sea Scrolls. He goes into these Book of Jubilees. He uses the uncanon other books that are not canonized scripture. And then he starts reading off these 
uh, unbelievable, unbiblical ramblings of his. I'll let you read it for yourself. I've highlighted here. Yeah, modern rabbinic Judaism prophecies. People, stay away from Tom Horn. And then he's saying oh, there's possible rapture. He's even casting doubt on a rapture time. Uh, I've highlighted his actual transcript here. There's a couple notes here about exposing Tom Horn and some pretty outrageous lies. And he hangs out. Look at birds of a feather flock together. Look at this. This is Hal Lindsey, Bill Solace, Chris Putnam, Chris Pinto, Russ Dizdar. I exposed him. And L.A. L. Mazzulli, uh, Terry James. Now, Gary Stearman is a charlatan. He's hired, He'll go to anyone to sell one of their books, and he gets promotes it. And even Chuck Misler. I've gotten some good stuff from Chuck Misler. But people... He's all in with all of them. And uh, prophecy, Tom Horn gets caught in his own lies. Yeah, look at this. Read this. I was really I'm like, wow. The guy's he's recorded himself lying and changing over a period of a few months. Now, these Essenes were Jewish mystical sects, a, a sect of Jewish mystics. They were not biblical at all. They're associated with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Read this. It's exposing them, people. So run from these people. Get your Bible. Know this, that we are in a gap of time. The rapture will happen imminently. We don't know when. If someone says, oh, look at the Jewish calendar, add these days up, don't do it. Say, run along. Dear Lord, I pray that eyes be opened and ears hear in your most precious loving name. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha.